Father, we praise you and we thank you, God, for the time that you've given us. Lord, we praise you for another opportunity to bring your word. Lord, to prisoners all over this nation, Lord, I thank you for this opportunity, for the guidance and the direction. Lord, touch my mind and touch my mouth. Help me be the light and the vessel, Lord, that you can use, that you can speak through, that you can shine through today. And I'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. I'm, uh, I'm going to ask y'all to pray for me tonight. I found out last couple of days that, that I'm, I'm going to be in Morgan County Friday night and Sunday night, Morgan County Prison, so I desire your prayers. We're, uh, we're coming to a, a place that I didn't realize it, but these 902 prisons and jails that we're approved in, we are, we have to get, uh, what's it called? Appro uh, not approval, but okayed in those facilities. So we're in a bunch of them, but not all of them. And uh, that's going to take a lot of footwork, a lot of leg work. And I desire your prayers because this is something that, it just keeps getting bigger. And I found an association today that, that uh, for all the uh, state sheriffs, and that's going to that's gonna help. But you just pray that I've got the wisdom, the Lord guides me and directs me, and I've got enough uh, understanding to do what I need to do because this is an obstacle course. I mean, it's just something constantly every day coming up that I've got to figure out how to get over it, get around, or remove it. So just pray for me. And uh, pray that tonight that we come to understand what we have uh, been made to be in Him. You know, Pastor, you touched on where these scriptures went last night. Yeah, Romans 5, 17. And like I said, it's, it's amazing that we... These things are 18 months, these notes are 18 months old, and it lines right up. It just, it, it thrills me. We're going to be in Romans the 15th, or the 5th chapter, starting with the 17th verse. We are in the 15th verse last week. We're going to skip two verses and go through uh, 17 through 19. It says, for if by one man's offense death reigned by one. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. It says, Jesus Christ, therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. It says, for, by, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Now the New Living Translation says, for the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many. But every, even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness for all who receive it will, li will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. Yes, Adam, one's, yes, yes, Adam's one sin brings condemnation for everyone. But Christ's one act of righteousness brings the right relationship with God and a new life for everyone. Because one person disobeyed God Many became sinners, but because one other person obeyed God, many will be made righteous. And that's talking about Adam and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Let me read what the Amplified Classic says. It says, For if because of one man's trespass, lapse, offense, death reigned through that one, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace unmerited favor, and the free gift of righteousness, putting them into right standing with himself, reign as kings in life through man's 
uh, false steps and falling away led to condemnation. I think I've jumped something here. Ran his kings and left. Let me back up and read that again. He says, For if because of one man's trespass, lapse, offense, death reigned through that one, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace, unmerited favor, and the free gift of righteousness, putting them into right standing with himself, reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, the, the Messiah, the anointed one. Well then, as one man's trespass, one man's uh, righteous leads to acquittal and, and right standing with God and life for all men. For just as by one man's disobedience, falling, failing to hear heedlessness and carelessness, the many were constituted sinners. So by one man's obedience... The many will be constituted righteous, made acceptable to God, brought into right standing with him. Now, we, we talked about this. Pastor talked about it last night. And we talked a little bit about it last, last week on the Thursday podcast. But I want to I try to explain a little bit about what Adam done. Adam was... Without sin in the garden. He, he didn't know what sin was. The only thing he didn't. He, he, he was told not to do. Was eat of the, of the knowledge. Of uh, for the tree of the fruit. Of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Yet he went and done it. And when he did. He ushered in death. To all men. He died spiritually. Now the Bible says. They told, God told them. Said, if you eat that tree you'll die. They didn't die physically. They died, they died spiritually. And I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna ask you a question. Galatians three thirteen and fourteen, honey. Will you put that up? It says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, what is the curse of the law? It's spiritual death, it's poverty, and sickness. And we've been redeemed from all that. See, when spiritual death came on Adam, fear came. What did he do? He ran, and he hid. God came looking for him, and he hid out. And, and, and he said, what have you done? And he went through this whole thing of what happened in the, in the garden. He died spiritually when he ate of that fruit. And then tried to blame it on his wife. And what I want you to understand today is that, that this whole series, this whole, this whole in him scripture study is, is geared towards me teaching what God has given me about who we have been made to be in Christ. We've been redeemed from all that. We've been redeemed from, from the curse that came on this earth over Adam's sin. And these scriptures... Talk about what Jesus Christ brought into this world for us. And that's God's unmerited favor. He paid the price that nobody could pay. And I know you've heard this over and over for probably the biggest part of your life. But you've got to understand what you have been made to be. You have been made righteous to stand before God. Before God, a, a, a carnal being yet born again spiritually set free from all the junk that adam brought on us and when we come to understand that and realize that god has made us the righteousness of god that, that jesus christ made us righteous so that we can come boldly to his throne and realize that that i i never understood how i could just run to god when i messed up i always thought i had to go hide I mean, that's, that's, that's carnality. That's just plain old sick worry, fear over, over making a mistake. And God don't want us to, to live in that. He wants us to know that Jesus put us in a place that we can hold our head up in. Hold our head up and walk strong through this life 
He said, well, what, what, are you, what are you getting at? Pastor said it. I've said it. We've talked about it for months now. I mean, this is week 18. But I'm talking about finding out who you are so that you can go out those doors and tell somebody else who they can be in Christ Jesus if they're not saved. And if they are born again, you can, you can, you can teach them. What we're, what we're learning right here in this book that God has said a whole lot more to us, for us, and about us than we know. I lived 40 years not knowing who I was, what Christ had done, the, the assurance that he had given me, that I could walk in the, in, the, in the assurity that what he done was good enough. I lived the biggest part of my adult life not knowing that. I, I, I carried a load that I should have ne never carried. And it, was, and it was really because of unbelief. Unbelief to, that I, was, I thought I had to do something to help Christ, help my Lord and Savior to keep me born again. No, he done it all. Now, what did he say? He died for, for all, once for all. And we can stand in that confidence. We can stand in the assurance that God has got us. He's got us. We, we're living in a world right now that don't know, don't know which way to turn. There's people in this world that need this assurance because everyday life is consuming them. Consuming them because they don't know where to stand in this life. They don't know who to depend on. I, I talk to people all the time, and especially the younger they are, the less they've been taught in life. Unless they were raised in, in, a, in a church like this, and they've got fed from the time they were babies until they were adults, most of them are as just, I mean, uh, they're as confused as they come. Why? Because they have no grounding. They're, gr they're not grounded in this. They may be grounded in you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. And, you know, if you don't do, if you'll do, do this and don't do that, you're fine. They're, they're grounded on works and religion. But this is not what this is talking about. Adam messed up, yes. But we're not Adam, right? We ain't Adam. Well, they, we have nothing to do with Adam anymore. Yes, we have an Adamic nature, our flesh. But Jesus Christ died to buy all that Adam threw away. He died to, to, to make sure that we can count on that. Christ, Christ, what did uh, uh, Galatians 3.13 say? <coughs> Christ has, but Christ has rescued us from the curse announced by the law when he was hung on the cross he took upon himself the curse for, the, for our wrongdoing. For it is written in the scriptures, Cursed is everyone who, hang, who is hung on a tree. What's 14 say? It says, Through Christ Jesus, God has blessed the Gentiles with the same blessing he promised to Abraham. So that we who are believers might receive the promised Holy Spirit through faith. We receive every bit that God has for us. Everything God has for us by faith in Christ. In what he has done for us. The anointed one. And, and we're going we're gonna to go on to this, the seventh uh, verse. Or seventh chapter. And the fourth verse of Romans, Romans 7, 4, it says, Wherefore, my brethren, you also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be married to another, even to him who, was, who is raised from the dead, that, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. The New Living says, So, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the point. You died to the power of the law when you died with Christ. And now you are united with the one who, has ra who was raised from the dead. As a result, you can produce an har a harvest of good deeds for God. 
Now listen what the Amplified Classic says. It says, likewise, my brethren, you have undergone death as to the law through the crucified body of Christ, so that now you may belong to another, to him who was raised from the dead, in order that we may, may bear fruit for God. What is that fruit? It's this world. These people that, that run up and down the streets that have not a clue about Jesus Christ and what he done for us. That's the fruit. That is the fruit. But what did this seventh verse start out talking about? It says, Wherefore, my brethren, you also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ. Now, I always thought, oh, we talked about it last week, that preacher. I asked him, said, what is he going to preach on? He said, I'm going to preach on sin, and I'm again it. Well, that's, I mean, everybody knows that. But we are made, we are dead to that mess. We are dead. If you're in Christ Jesus, you can walk free of all the shame and the condemnation that your, your sin has brought on you over the, over the years. It was so many, so many years that I spent not knowing that 1 John 1 and 9 was for me. That if I confess my sins, he was faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I done that over and over and over again, but I still didn't feel like that I measured up where I stood with him. Why? Because I didn't know I stood in him and knew without a shadow of doubt that I was confident in what God had done in my life. And it all, it all boiled down to my lack of faith. Faith in what? Faith in myself, first and foremost. But it all, it all was rooted in me not having faith in God to, to believe what he said in his book, in his word, that, was, that it was true for me. Like I said, I've said it for years. I could do it. I could believe it for anybody in here. Anybody out there going up, I don't care what they've done. I could believe that God's word would work for them. But somewhere in my mind, I thought I was different. And I'm not. Ain't none of us any different. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? They, we're all the same in God's eyes. God is no respecter of person. And if we will come to understand that and, and believe that God is just as much for for me or you or anybody else as he is Billy Graham or anybody else in this world that's trying to make an impact for him. He loves us all. He loves us all. And when, when he told me, he said, son, I love the abortion doctor as much as I love the babies they're killing, I started seeing, just a, got just a glimpse of just how much God cared about everybody. Everybody. I don't care how many tattoos you got. I don't care how many times you've been in prison, how many times you've messed up. I'm going to tell you God loves you more, more than you will ever understand in this world we live in. And that is something that, that I want to drive into everybody that will that listen. Because people, they, they say, well, I understand, but you just don't know what I've done in my lifetime. Honey, I've done things that I wouldn't tell nobody. I don't want to talk about it. I got invited down here to do a, a video and I don't think they got what they wanted out of me because they just want me to, want me to talk about all the, all the junk. And you know what I end up talking about? Who I was in him. Who God had made me to be. Made me want to get up and run around that studio. I mean, because I knew that I knew. I, my, my past is my past. It's mine. I ain't proud of it. I ain't going to knock nobody for making mistakes because I've made a lot of them. But I'm going to tell everybody I know and everybody I can what Jesus Christ can make them in him. That's so that they can walk strong in what this world says they can't. You, you get out here and look around. You get out here and look around and you, you take most ministers out, out from behind the pulpit and put them out here in this world. They're a duck out of water. They are a duck out of water. I know. I promise you, you go in up here in some of these jails, and, and I go in with a bunch of them, and you can just see the uneasiness in them. They walk, I walk in there, I'm like, I'm at home. I, I, I'm just, I know where I'm supposed to be, and they don't worry me a bit. But you see some of them that are just nervous 
They don't know, they're, they're doing this everywhere they go. Why? Because they don't know who's, whose side they're on or who's on their side. They, they need the confidence that the, God's word will give them to walk into any situation. Walk out this road, get out, go down here to the mall and sit down and find you somebody that needs Jesus. Because we're all going to come across people that, that you and I, you're going to meet people I'll never meet. Y'all going to meet people I'll never meet. You're going to run across people that I'll never see. We all need to be doing this. Yeah, I'm doing these videos and these things are going out. That's wonderful. But the fact of the matter is, we all need to be working toward a, toward a common goal. And that is to see the world born again. To see the world come to a place in their life that, that these, this, the distraction of that on the wall at home doesn't get in the way of what God has made them, cut them out to be. You know, there's a lot of different occupations here in this place right now. And we've all got a place that God wants to turn up the volume with us so that we can all be made to be that light, that beacon. I pray I get, I get that done every day of my life. And, and whether it be doing a video, whether it be going to Morgan County Prison Friday night, or whether it be going to Walmart, I don't care where it's at. I want an opportunity. I want an open door. And I promise you, he opens them for people that want to walk through them. Because every time I turn around, I, I had one invitation to come to Morgan County Sunday night. And they text back and they said, well, we know you're going Sunday night. But could you go Friday night too? Sure, absolutely. Oh, I don't care. I don't care if it's seven days a week. I'll go. Why? Because those people need it. They need him. I needed him. I had somebody to tell me who I was. Somebody to teach me. And that's, why, uh, that's, that's everybody's job. To go into all the world and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. And what he has made us to be in that sacrifice. Stand on that. Let's see. 1 Corinthians 1 and 4. Uh, 1 and 4. Paul told the Corinthians, says, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. He told them, he said, I thank God for what God has done for you. I, I, do you understand what God has done for us? The grace and the mercy. We're, we're, looking, we're, we're looking at life. And that, that video or that picture I just kept putting up here Sunday, Sunday morning, I mean, that is so true. People look at God like he's a tyrant. And he ain't. I don't care how many years you got on your prison sentence. I don't care how many, how many times you've messed up and had to go back and say, Lord, forgive me. He'll forgive you for the rest of, it, of your days. Why? Because Jesus took all that on him and paid it in full. That's what this thing's all about, is seeing people's lives change through what Jesus Christ done, what we couldn't done, do. That, the New Living Translation is about the same. It says, I always thank my God for you and for the gracious gifts he has given you that now that you belong to Christ Jesus. He said, now that you are born again. The Amplified Classic says, I thank my God at all times for you because of the grace, the favor, and the spiritual blessing of God which, has, which was bestowed on you in Christ Jesus. Paul said, I thank God that that grace is just as much for you as it is for anybody else. These Corinthians, this Corinthian church was a mangled up mess at times. There's people doing stuff in that church that shouldn't have never been done. But yet Paul kept driving it in them. Who you are. You made mistakes. Yeah, we're going to tell you about them. We're going to tell you to straighten them up. But we're going to also tell you that God's grace is sufficient. So you can hold your head up and feel like that you can come to him. I want the world to know they can come to God. 
because the majority of the world don't know that. They, they, they think they've got to hide in a corner when they mess up. They don't want to show back up at church because they stumped their toe last week. We're all going to do it. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by God's grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. 23 and 20, Romans 3, 23 and 24 are together. So many times the 23rd verse, it gets used all the time, but the 24th verse never gets mentioned. Being justified freely by God's grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. When I, when I see the men and the women, I, they, they asked me to go in the women's pod here a few weeks ago out here, and I, just so luckily, uh, the man and woman that was here one Sunday night, Mark, him and his wife was uh, uh, going in, they said, come on, go with us, because I don't go in the women's pod. But you, you wouldn't believe the need that are in these jails and prisons in the women's, in the women's prison. There's a whole women's prison in, in uh, Bledsoe County that is in desperate need of mentors, people that will just, just say, hey, give me a call if you need something. When they, when they get out, you know, they've got questions. They've got big questions. Uh, that lady, we, I've talked about it before, but that lady that we know that she spent 33 years in federal pen in, in uh, northern Ohio, I, I sent her a, a video or a, a link to a YouTube channel. She said, what's this? She had no idea what it was. All you got to do is touch it, and, and you can get all kinds of information from that. But she didn't know how to operate it. Now, can you imagine trying to get a driver's license and a and, uh, just trying to make simple decisions. 30 years ago, it was a lot easier to get around in public than it is now. You know, there's things that goes on right now. We, we, uh, my, I, mean, I took my dad to the uh, uh, doctor today and sitting down and filling out a bunch of paperwork. And they'll send you a, a link to your phone that you can put all that information in that thing before you get there. And, and, you know, all their information. Well, I've done it three times and couldn't get it to go through. And I know pretty, I know a, a little bit about one of these. I'm not that smart. But can you imagine not even knowing how to even get started on that? Because that right there rules the world anymore. If you don't have one of these, you're behind. And these people get out of these, of these prisons that they've never laid eyes on one. And they, they, they're walking around out here. And I, I forget it's a high percentage of people that spend a long time in prison that end, right, end up right back because they don't, they don't know how to operate. That's just the way it is. So y'all pray. Like I say, we're, I'm seeing things that I thought, you know, I'd never see. And that's people just flocking to these meetings. That, that, that week before, week, the month before last, I didn't get in until after 7 o'clock. They had done shut the chapel down. And they found out I was there, and they all come flooded right back in there. They said, we, don't, we didn't think we was going to have church. I said, well, they held me up. I walked through this. I walked through the gate last week. They, did, they said, how you doing, Mr. Hayes? And, and I just same as walked all the way out, out through there. Didn't even have to wait on the gate to open. They had it open up when I got there. Didn't have to do nothing. And that's what God can do. And that's what, that's what he has done to see these people get hold of what he wants them to get hold of. And that is what his word says about them. Not how bad they feel for the mistakes they've made, but what this book says about them, what he has said. Now, this, one, this, uh, this scripture, 2 Corinthians 5.18 I, I'm, I guess I'm going, this is going to be uh, something that I'm just going to read it. Lord, show me. 2 Corinthians 5, 18. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Christ Jesus. Now listen. And has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. The Amplified or the... Uh, 
New Living Translation says, says, and all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ, and God has given us this task of reconciling people to God. Hey, you got that up here, or to him, rather. The Amplified Classic says, but all things are from God, who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself, received us into favor, brought us into harmony with himself, and gave to us the ministry of reconciliation that by word and deed we might aim to bring others into harmony with him. Every born-again child of God that walks, the strip, walks this earth today has been given a ministry of reconciliation. What, do, what is reconciliation? What, is it, what does it mean to be reconciled? It means to, to, to be restored into friendly relations between you and him. Restored. Put back together. Restored into, into a friendly relations with the one that keeps the sun and the moon and the stars and the earth in order. And so many people don't know that. They go through life and every time they mess up, they think they've got to go all the way back down to the bottom of the ladder and start again. That's the reason the church is so splintered. Worldwide, the only thing that's, that holds the church together is the fact that Jesus Christ died for our, our sins. When it, We ought to be in unity, unity about that and all these other things that, that, that God wants us to know so that we can be strong. There was a man, there was a man come to the house not before last. And uh, we was in the basement messing around. He got to talking. And uh, he's Church of Christ. And his church has started a second service with uh, music. He said, well, you can't really, you can't really say that you really can't have music. And, and I'm like, great. And, and I got to, I, I got to tell, tell him, I said, listen. I said, we'll never be in unity of doctrine. I said, your church is full of people that will never see everything just perfect. I said, it'll never, never be that way. But unity of faith in Christ Jesus and what he done is what will hold everything together. I, got to, I, I really got to, got to really talk to this man. And, and, and he was just a great conversation when, he, when he, he just loosened up. I said, unity of faith in him. In Jesus Christ and what he done for us. Not what we done. Not how good we can be. Not how many times that we get it right. Because I'm going to tell you something. An attitude of getting it right all the time will make you self-sufficient. And I don't want to be self-sufficient. I don't want to be self-sufficient. It'll make you self-righteous when you get to a place that you think I know everything. Uh-uh. No, if, if the day I quit learning is the day I'm going to go home and hide. Because I, when I quit learning, when I quit thinking I need to see something, I've messed up. I'm, I'm plumb out of le out left field, and I don't ever be that way. Because you can, you'll, you can study this word for the rest of your days and, and not scratch the surface on what God wants us to, do, to know in this book. I've heard it over and over how people can can get so wound up. I had a, a, a deacon friend of mine tell me one time, he said, I, I saw a man get so deep in the Word, he said he went plumb crazy. I don't see that. I ain't no way. If you, if, you're going, if you truly are letting the Holy Spirit guide you through this book, I ain't no way there's no mental Ill illness going to come out of this. Now, that's what the Catholics used to always say. You know, this book, don't read it. Lord, help you go nuts. Oh, that's crazy. That's, that's the, that right there is the key to life. To life. And walking in, the, in those truths. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how I, I could have, I don't know how I operate today without this. If I had lived through what I've lived through in the last five years of my life without this book, I don't know I could be standing here right now. Because this, God's word is what has brought me and my family through 
I thank God for it. And he has given every person that is born again out here in this world a ministry to bring others, to reconcile, to help reconcile others to him, to reconcile them, see them, see them restored to friendly relations. And the sad part about it, most, a lot of people, a, a, a lot of people, they're born again, but they struggle every day of their life. Because they don't know what that salvation merits them. What, what were we talking about? Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us. For it is written. You want to put that up? Sorry. I can read it. But Galatians 3, 13 and 14. She didn't put 29. Christ purchased our freedom. Redeeming us from the curse, doom of the law, and its condemnation by himself. Becoming a curse for us, for it is written in the scriptures, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, is, cru is crucified. To the end, that through, through their receiving Christ Jesus, the blessing promised to Abraham, might come upon the Gentiles so that we through faith might all receive the realization, the promise of the Holy Spirit. Can you put up uh, the King James Version of 329? See, the promises that God gives us in the salvation that Jesus Christ died to give us I think we read part of the uh, Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. But I want to encourage you to read Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. Because this right here tells us. It says, if you be Christ, in other words, if you be in Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. The promise that God has made to his children we're God's children just as much as the Jews are. I've said it before. We're spiritual Jews. We're, we're born again children of God. We're Abraham's seed. Who is Abraham's seed? That's the Jewish people. I mean, my goodness, believe what the book says and walk confidently in it. Walk confidently in what God has, has wrote down for us to live in. I got one more. Galatians uh, 3, 13 and 14. No, sorry. Galatians 2, 18. 2, 16. Is this the, the King James? Knowing that a man is not justified by works of the law, but by faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by faith of Christ and not by works of the law. For by works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Now that's all I'm going to read on that one there. Don't worry about them other two because I want to talk about that. Being justified. Don't, don't ever think. No flesh be justified. Now, this, we can't work hard enough to get that. But what did it say in the first part of that? It says, it says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith, by the faith of Jesus Christ. We talked about a little bit about that last week. The Bible says that God has given us the measure of faith. That says we, we were justified by the faith of Christ of Jesus Christ. His faith. Well, who, where'd that measure of faith come from? It sure, we sure didn't measure, measure, muster it up. It came from him. It's God's faith. It's God's faith. Mark eleven twenty two says, have faith in God. Or you go over in the margin of the Schofield Bible, and it says, have the faith of God. Or the faith that God has made, has given us. He has given us all the measure of faith. What are you going to do with that? How do you... Grow, how do you uh, Enlarge that faith. 
Everybody said, everybody talks about, you know, give me more faith. Well, we've got enough faith to move mountains. I, I, I heard a preacher say this one time. Uh, an oak tree ain't nothing but an acorn that held its ground. God's given us everything we need in that the measure of faith to stand and be strong. You can, you can, ta you can take that one acorn and grow an a oak tree that you can't wrap your arms around. It'll grow into that. Well, how does it grow? You nourish it. You give it what it needs. And you exercise, just like that muscle. You exercise that muscle. And the more you work it, the more you step out on that faith, the stronger it gets. You step out in faith and see God just catch you every step of the way. I, 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 I've, got, I've always had a, a picture of Peter stepping out before he even thought. He stepped out of that boat. And he walked on that water. And it wasn't until he started looking around at all the, the wind and the waves and the things going on around him that he began to sink. He, the Bible says he walked on the water. He did. And Christ, Christ he didn't, didn't let him die. He didn't let him drown. He's, come on. You done it. You done it. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to step out. And go out here in this world and see others reconciled to him. To see others come to him and see a, a change in their lives that a lot of people struggle with their entire Christian life. A Christian life shouldn't be hard. Jesus said it, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And if it ain't easy and it ain't light, it ain't God. That's the way I look at it. Because he said it, he said, I'll, I'll, I'll go with you always, even to the end of the world. He's there. People yell and scream and, and want God uh, hear, to hear their prayers. Well, if you're born again, he's right here. You don't have to scream. He's right here. You have, you, your prayers don't have to get no, no higher in your nose because he's right here. His spirit dwells in God's born-again children. And we worry about him hearing our prayers. I'm going to tell you something. If you're born again, he's listening. He hears. He answers. And he wants things to, to be strong in your life so that we can get out here and do something to, to grow his kingdom. To see people born into this, into this, into this kingdom that, and walk strong in it. Not, not be a dependent. I told Greg and Monica the other night. I said, my ministry, he, I, I said, my ministry, I don't want to grow a bunch of dependents. I don't want nobody hanging on me. I want to grow a bunch of independent people that don't need me. They want to get out here and do the same thing and, and, and go grab people and say, come here, let me tell you what God can do for you, not what Stacy can do. What, what, you know, don't brag them in here and expect me to do something for them. All I'm going to do is give them that. And, and, and believe God that it works because I know it does. But dependent, dependent on what? I'm, I'm dependent on that book. I'm dependent on the spirit that dwells in me. I'm dependent on my heavenly father. I'm dependent on my Lord and Savior. I ain't dependent on you, Pastor. I love you. I'd do anything in the world to help you and do what I, what I know to be true. But you can't help me a lot of times. And I can't help you. But we both know who can, right? We both know the author and the finisher of our faith. And bless God, I'm going to see things happen in this world. There, there's people out here that need to be reconciled. They need to know they can be reconciled. They don't need to be dependent on somebody. They need to be dependent on the one that saved them and born them, bore them into this family. And the one that wrote down everything they need to walk free and strong in this world. Now, I've done all these, these scriptures tonight. And I do this every time I do a video or a podcast or a meeting. I want to ask you, if you're watching this video, whether it be April the 23rd or March 23rd of 2023 or... 2033, 
I don't care when, when you're watching this, I want you to understand something. That most of all, I want you to understand God loves you. I don't care where you've been, what you've done, how many times you've done it. I want you to know and understand that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and was raised on the third day for your justification to justify you. He done everything that you need to live a, a strong Christian life and never have to worry about your past, never have to worry about your future if you'll just believe what he says. Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. It says you shall be saved. It don't say you might be if you're good enough. It says you shall be saved. It says for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You know, that's a personal thing. Salvation is a personal thing. I don't get in the way of people getting born again. I give them the the opportunity, and I give them the recipe. But it's up to them to, to take that opportunity and do what God's Word says. Millions upon millions of people in this world believe in God. They believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins and was raised on the third day for their justification. But they have never invited Jesus into their heart and made him Lord. They've never confessed him as Lord. I've heard it over and over in my lifetime. I've asked God to forgive me 10,000 times. Join the club. I have too. We've all asked him to forgive us. But I'm going to ask you tonight if you've made him Lord, if you've invited him in to be your Lord and Savior, because he's willing. He's willing and he is able to see you born into the family. All you have to do is ask him. Say, Lord, come into my heart. Come into my heart. I want to be born again. Now, like I say, I don't care where you've been or what you've been doing. God loves you. He loves the abortion doctor as much as he loved the, the babies that they cut up and throw in the trash. He loves everyone on this planet. And I want you to understand and to know he loves you. He cares for you and wants more than anything to be part of your life. So today... I'm asking you, do you want to be born again? Because if you've never been born again, it's easy. It, there's nothing hard about salvation. Salvation is easy. All you have to do is say, Lord, come into my heart and into my life and be my Lord and Savior today. I confess you as my Lord and believe in my heart that God done what he said he done. And that is saw you sacrificed on the cross and raised Jesus Christ from the dead. So that I can be saved. Won't you, won't you allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart and into your life today? I'm going to pray a prayer. And I'm going to ask you, if you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, confess him right now. Father, I praise you and I thank you, God, for this opportunity that you've given us. Lord, I pray for every person that listens to this video and watches this video in years to come. That they would... Come to understand and to know what Jesus Christ came to do for them. That not only did he come to save them, but Lord, that he, that he came to make them a whole lot more than they ever realized in this world. Lord, guide and direct, Lord, today I pray that their eyes and their ears we be open to your word, the strength that it brings and the guidance and the understanding, Lord, that, that only you can give us. Lord, we'll forever give you all the praise and glory for